That's a crowd-pleasing moment. Give it a, a round of applause to our Supernatural panel. They can work a crowd like no other, my goodness. Well, as usual, you guys, you can see Supernatural is a phenomenon all over the world and Belfast loves the show. So can we please just go one by one and let us know how you've been feeling? How you been? I haven't seen you in, what, a week? A week, I haven't seen you in a week. <laughs> days, at least. Yes. How you been? What's been going on? I've been great. How have you been? I've been great. We've I been just... enjoying our time in Belfast. Sam and I got to go around the city yesterday. We've never been here before. Oh, wow. So we did what you have to do. We went to the Ulster Museum for art, and then we went to the Titanic for tragedy. And cried a lot. And cried. It's really depressing. Like, we have to leave and go have lunch. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good time. And we, we found this really great little French cafe. I ate chicken fingers, but in French. It was awesome. <laughs> Bloody tourists. <laughs> I have to see the place I'm going to. Tonight right. I'll be at a bar getting you, wrecked. But are you ready, DJ? Then... DJ, after me, you ready? Yeah. What about you? <laughs> what about you? What about you? What about you? That's kind of how you doing. Oh, is that what it is? Kinda. What about you? What about you? So that's you? what I say to people, like when I go to a bar tonight, I just sit there and go, what about you? Okay, perfect. <laughs> it's a bit too articulate. <laughs> what about you? What about you? What about you? You're no stranger to Belfast. Are you, are you a Belfast fan of the culture? I, and the... I have spent many, <laughs> many, many long nights that I don't remember in the 80s in this wonderful town full of wonderful people. So I got up this morning. Da, 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 da. No, I got up this morning, five o'clock. I did a concert in Dublin last night with Billy Moran, Paul Carella, and Mandy Clark. Got up this morning, went to Connolly and went, I've got like 150 kilos of drum equipment with me. I'll find a, I'll find a, uh, a trolley. They haven't had trolleys at Connolly for like 25 years. They've all been nicked. They use them for go-kart racing. I mean, all this stuff. So I finally get it. So I get to platform two, get all the gear up there. They said, sorry, man, there's, uh, we've changed it to platform seven. It's three quarters of a mile on the other side of the train station. I push all this gear to platform seven. I get to the top of the ramp. Sorry, uh, we've moved to platform three. I'm like, for God's sakes. So I finally got on the Belfast train, I'm on the Belfast train, and it's like, uh, due to some pigeon that landed on a line somewhere, uh, there will be bus service from Newry. I'm like, oh, for God's sakes. So I got out of Newry, and that's uh, where I met Stevie. Stevie was cool. He and I had a double-decker bus ride, just he and I, from Newry to here. So. I'll tell you what was wonderful was to see the difference between here, 1986, probably last time I was up here, and now it's just fantastic. Paved roads, <laughs> right? But it's, I'm telling you something, just to be serious, because it means a lot to me to be here, really. It's always meant a lot to me to be here, but I've had some amazing times up here, Queens, and all sorts of great gigs that I've managed to do up here over the years. But um, to see change, to see growth, to see movement, to see things makes me so happy. The best people, the best humor, good food, good stories, good music. It's a special place you have here, all right? It's a special, special place you have here, and it's good to be back. honor that you guys could be here with us and obviously you have a very loyal fan base and the people of Belfast are very generous. Tell us about what Supernatural fans have been gifting you lately because I know a lot of you guys are receiving really interesting, yes, jewelry. Samantha, we'll start it's with some jewelry. It's the, it's, the, it's the, I don't know what you call them. Friendship bracelets? Yeah, Taylor we, Swift We get a lot beads? of those. We get a lot <laughs> of know. bracelets. And I get a lot of candy. Yeah. A lot of candy. What candy did you make the mistake of saying you liked? Orange Kit Kats, I've gotten, I've, I have so many Orange Kit Kats because we don't have them in America. Yeah, you do. No, we don't. You can't go to a corner store and buy Orange yeah, Kit Kats. What corner store unless it's in a British pub? There's all the candy stores in Santa Monica. There's ones in... No, but you have to go to a, one that's specific, that has British goods. Well, you the, have mall, to, the malls have them now, but Kit Kats... Like, you can't go to a local store and get orange-flavored Kit Kats. In I have never no. seen an orange Kit No, but you Kit can Kat get them here. Life. Have you had green tea Kit Kat? Yeah, I've had those. Yeah, I don't like green tea flavored stuff. And I get a lot of 
those gummies that have marshmallow on one side. Yeah. I hate them. And I keep getting them. Because <laughs> the I said, I Haribo. love gummies. The marshmallow. How can you not like Haribo? Haribo. The marshmallow makes me gag. Yeah. It's a textural thing. Have like you eating. seen the one that's an egg? So I just eat, so I just, so I just bite off the gummy part and throw the so marshmallow like away. Core. It's like eating foam core. Yeah. yeah, it really is like eating foam core. Even and I get a lately. lot of fan art. You get a lot of fan art. You get a lot of fan oh. art. People love to draw me. And I got a lot of cookies in tins. I don't ever get cookies in tins. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I don't. I, I like cookies. I love tins. By the way, that's biscuits. In case anybody needs a translation. <laughs> He's translating for us. Biscuits. biscuits. Biscuits in tins. Yes, biscuits in tins. What are they gifting you, Mr. Shepherd? What are you receiving? Love, affection. Aww. That's what makes me happy. I do, I do like people of a certain generation, actually my generation, terribly sorry I heard you were poorly. <laughs> I wasn't poorly, I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. They, um, there's a lot of love and uh, it just makes me very happy. I love coming to see you guys. Look, you know, we make TV with our friends. We hope it's good. It gets sent out to post-production. We're already on to the next thing. Blah, 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 blah. We, we don't know. We don't know what the reaction is. And we come from live theater and we come from live performance. And that's when you know your audience. But when we come to a convention, we get our audience back. And that's the greatest thing you can have is the interaction, you know, your oohs and ahs and groans. Yes. Ooh. I mean, it's just magic. So it's, it's, that's the greatest gift of all is getting yeah. to see your audience. I love that. It's pretty crazy, this thing that we did in a sound stage, yeah. like in With 150 yeah, of our mates. <laughs> that seems so just us. Yeah. It goes all over the world. It's weird that. And also, I will never rid myself of these fools my whole life. Like, I'm on a 27-person text thread with you guys that I have to keep muted because one person says one thing. And I'm like, I am trying to watch Below Deck. I'm trying to watch The Block. Leave me alone. Below Deck. Oh, below deck. We have to, final question for me, we're gonna get to the fans. What sort of, uh, I don't wanna say trashy, but you know, housewives, things like that. What's your guilty pleasure on television? EastEnders. Ooh, I love EastEnders. I've, <laughs> oh. I have East End, how many episodes of EastEnders have, have you watched? I've not missed an episode since 1996. Wow. I was watching it last night. I will, and I don't care what anybody thinks about it. See, I don't believe in guilty pleasure. If I like something and it's not hurting anybody, I'm not guilty about it. I don't fucking love it. EastEnders. Yeah! In you ready? It. You ready, DJ? In it, Mike. DJ? Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. I love it. I would never be on it, but I love it. I, I have a pair no of Pat guilt. Butcher's earrings framed next to my night, in, on my nightstand right next to my bed. I love it. I don't care what anybody thinks. I'll fight you. Have you ever met anyone from the show? And if so, were you starstruck? What? Have you ever met anyone from the show? You know this story. I stalked, <laughs> I stalked Martine McCutcheon for two hours when I was 19 years old. I, I saw her in the West End and, and followed her for two hours like this. I understand now that's against the law, but I, I'd never seen a famous person before. So now when people do weird shit to me, I'm like, I get it. I get it. I've done it. You know, she follows me on Twitter. I am um, psychotically <laughs> obsessed with everybody on EastEnders, but I don't, here's the thing. Now I don't want to meet any, I don't want to meet anybody in case they're awful. And also, I don't want to hear them if they're not talking in that accent. I get it. I get it when people come up to me and they're disappointed that I'm not my characters. I totally get it because I saw a, a, an interview with uh, Wendy Richards who played, what, she, what, was, what was her character? Well, we all know yeah, from Pauline. Are you, are she played being Pauline. Served? But she, talk, she talked like, she was like, so yesterday I went to the grocery store. Did you know about the grocery store? She, I'm like, don't talk like that. You say in it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. He took away the microphone. Well, we're, Why sorry. did he take away the microphone? I don't know, that's what I was just looking at too. Put we are gonna back. Go, we're gonna go to the fans to get some questions. Well, I'll go out, screw that. There we go. Who's desperately requiring to ask a question? He's There's gonna Oprah hat. Winfrey the hell out of this mother. Yeah, more Phil Donahue, unfortunately. I love it, it is hot up in here. Hello. 
If they get your hands off my microphone. <laughs> if they are doing a, another season of Supernatural, is Mark Shepard going to come back as Crowley? I don't know, DJ, is Mark Shepard going to come back as Crowley if they do another season of Supernatural? I heard he was. There you go. You heard it here first. Is Mark Shepard. Hiya. Hi, I was wondering... Um, Thank you for this what fan. Was your favorite you saved my scene life. What's the film with Jensen and Jared? Say again? What's your favorite scene the film with Jensen and Jared? What's your favorite scene with Jensen and Jared? What's yours? Do you Mine? Know that, do you know that my first ever scene on Supernatural was with you? It was. It was when we were pouring blueberry vodka around you and we lit it on fire so you couldn't come after us. Remember that? I was about this tall. <laughs> oh Remember my that? God. That was I, a long time ago. I was ago. wearing a hunter coat. I'm about this tall and about this big around. Remember oh, that yeah, day? Yeah, yeah, Remember I that? Remember that. I remember that. I look just like this. Oh, yeah. DJ. DJ Quartz. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. it. Uh, my favorite scene without question is when Jensen Ackles, who is the consummate actor, did soaps for years, did all sorts of amazing things, never messes up lines, right? He never messes up lines. And he had a line to say with me, and uh, what's, the, what's the stupid angel called? Oh, Castiel. That's right, thank you. Um, He's so cute. And, um, and uh, so Jared, myself, and wh whatever he said that person's name was, um, we're in this scene, and the line is, I'd rather be slapped in the face during by a ma by a girl in a Zorro mask, right? That's that's the line. I'd rather be slapped in the face during by a girl in a Zorro mask. And he made a mistake on the first take, and he never makes mistakes. That led to 38 takes of Jared torturing him, literally. And I've never seen Jensen lose it so much in my entire life. I thought it was the greatest thing I've ever seen. That's why they didn't do lots of scenes with four of us together. Dude. It, what was your favorite scene, Sam? My favorite? Yeah, that you did with the boys. I don't know, I mean. Next. Yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> I, my favorite part was in between the scenes when I got to boss them around. Mom. Um, it's true. Yeah. No, they'll be like goofing off and I'm like... And they're like... Or at least I like to think that's how it went. Um, I don't know, it was very hard because they, they, it's very hard to play, to keep, to keep it together because they're joking between, they're so professional and I'm so distracted and I have to not like forget where my mark is and stuff. I was just trying not to mess up because if you mess up, it's over. Like I said, they give them an inch, that's the end yeah, of the game. Yeah, they get all over you and they won't leave you alone about it. And then they keep, oh, what was that? Me, 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 me. Yes. Yeah, and then they keep doing it over and over and over again <laughs> until you don't like them anymore. And then you go Correct. home and write in your diary, I don't like them. Yes. That never happened to me. Ladies and gentlemen, 20 years of therapy. <laughs> exactly. And for me, it was less messing up my lines than walking in the wrong spot. And they would literally grab me by the back of the coat. And if you look, there's scenes where I'm like, it looks like I'm not moving on my own. It's because I'm being like put in the right spot by giant people. And then I'd get made fun of for that. Uh, this is for all of you, uh, but was there an episode of Supernatural that your characters did not appear in, but wish they did? Ooh, what was your favorite episodes that you weren't in, but you wished you were? Uh, I love Baby. <sighs> Baby's, I think, I watched it again not that long ago, and I was like, this is good! How do they do this with, about an inanimate object? It was great. It was really great. I, I would have liked to have been in the French Connection as well. French Mistake? The what? The what? French Mistake, yes. Sorry. The French Connection is a movie with Gene Hackman, I think. I wasn't in that either. Gene Hackman. Yes. Yeah. He's about this tall. Yeah. Remember him? About this big around? He's Gene Hackman? Incredibly 92. racist. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't know that. Mark, we um, do have a mic if, if you For want. me, the Scooby-Doo episode, I, I, I loved Scooby-Doo so much me. when I was little. I had a crush on Velma before I knew what I was doing. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> what about you, Mark? What yeah, what about yours? you? You have to answer some of these questions. No, I, mean, I don't. I'm good. 
You can't just be the Oprah of this group. Hey, if I've got it, flaunt it. Okay, fine. Uh, so what was your favorite kind of character arc that you got to play as your character? Character arc? Favorite character arc that we played as character. What was your favorite character arc? It's getting a bit deep, this, isn't it? I didn't love when they tried to make me replace Bobby. I was only supposed to be for two episodes, but the fans got mad at me because this, the WB, or the CW, I told the CW, I will do this as long as you don't show a clip of me in Bobby's hat and do this, the new Bobby, question mark, and it's exactly what they did, and people turned on me, and I got upset, and then I called Jared and said I didn't want to come back on the show, and then Jared sent me screen grabs of things that people have said to him over the year, and I, and I was like this, oh, I'm fine. <laughs> Another is, year of therapy. This is nothing. Another year in therapy. <laughs> what do you want? Who was the hardest to stay serious around? Who's the, Who's hardest, the hardest, hardest to stay scariest around? Who is the hardest to stay serious around? Who's the hardest to stay serious, to stay? That's hard to say. Who's the hardest? That's, that's like Scottish people saying purple burglar alarms. You know that they can't say that. It's a, it's a whole thing. I think it's, ador I think it's adorable. Um, the hardest to stay serious around. Um, I don't know, probably Jared for me. I mean, Jensen. It's the fact that he's six foot five really makes it harder. Yeah, it really. Because he's a does. giant puppy with limbs that can do I things found, to you. I found Misha because he's just, you, ne you never know what he's going to do. Yeah, like Who's Misha? Misha Collins. He's about this tall and about this big. And he was Remember in him? a, he wore a coat never all heard the of time. Him. I never met him. Sensible her. shoes. Mm -hmm. He's good looking. Yeah, cool. Not much of an actor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know who you mean. <laughs> you no, I wasn't sure it. about that one. What do you want? <laughs> I've already asked the mom for this, but... Fine then. Oh. This is a question for you and DJ. Um, oh, no. What way, if you had it your own way, would you have ended Supernatural? I'm sorry to spoil it for anyone that hasn't got there yet. Listen, if, if, I didn't if you don't hear want to know the that. I got it. I if you don't, if don't want to know the score, don't go down the pub, right? Okay, so it's a bit late for spoiling Supernatural. I mean, give me a break. Um, but uh, what way would you, do you think the show should have ended that was different than the way it ended? I think, I think it ended the way it should have. The thing is, how do you end something like that? It's very hard to end that. I thought that my character had a great send-off. I couldn't believe they wrote such beautiful things for... I, Garth got to be the hero in an episode and save the boys. And it was just such a great thing. And I think it was because, like, I... I, th I think Garth was the way that you could see that the hunters could stop hunting and still have lives after it. That there was life beyond what they... And that's what the show was looking for, trying to find some normality, trying to fi find a, a way through all this. And Garth did it. Yes, he had to become a werewolf and a dentist. That's, it was so stupid. But why just be one thing? When I, had to, when I had that scene where I had to fill all of Dean's cavities, it was so stupid because it was so technical. Like, I'm not good with like 900 props. And so the, I had like a, an anesthetic thing and a tooth thing, and I'm supposed to be scraping but not touching him. Do you know what I mean? It was, I was in his mouth. I'm in, his, I'm in my friend's mouth. That's weird. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I'm engaged. It's weird. I had to bite Jensen. I had to bite him. I was like, I don't know how to do this. He's like, just, it was, just do it. Yeah, but the thing is, it's, it's I, I think it makes, sometimes it makes it harder when it is your friend, right? Like, I was, I was straddling <laughs> Alex once. I was trying to bite him. I was going, har, 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 har. and they gave me these new werewolf teeth that I couldn't close my mouth around, so I couldn't get the saliva out of them, so I started to drool, and I'm like, you, I'm like, call cut, motherfuckers, call cut, and I'm going, arr, arr, and I feel it going further down the teeth, and I'm like, they called right before, and I went, I almost drooled on you, and he was like, I know, I saw it coming. You know, I never had any of these experiences, right? You never drooled on any of your friends in a scene? No, well, no, I did torture some people and cut some stuff off. You know how it is. But it was like, that's how I show love, so that's easy. You never had to bite Jensen? No. Uh. See, the other thing is they never played any pranks on me either. 
Oh, was they that, didn't? They no. put fart spray in my trailer, and somebody put mayonnaise in my door handle, and I hate mayonnaise more than homophobia. <laughs> I hate it to death. Mayonnaise is my kryptonite. When Ty goes out of town, I throw his mayonnaise away. <laughs> I Hold hate on. it so bad. That makes you gooper, man. <laughs> you have a question? Thanks, Oprah. Uh, I was wondering how, like, you know, Dean and Sam have, like, the Impala with their own car, and then Castiel eventually gets his own car. I was wondering if you guys could have, like, your own Pacific car that's dedicated to your character. What would... Of course. My, char- my, car had a- my character had a car. It was like a <laughs> Chevelle. It was like one of those half... What's- hey, Mark, what's the name of that car that's half truck, half car? A uh, Ranchero or an El Camino? And it was an El Camino. I had an El Camino. I knew you would know that. <laughs> it's called a ute in Australia. Oh, I didn't know that. I know that a door frame is called an architrave in Australia, and you, <laughs> they call baseboard skirting boards. Yeah. You gotta hate the player, mate, not the game. I watch The Block, which is a home renovation show in Australia that I'm addicted to, and they love to say, hate the player, mate. Hey, not the game. No, hey, no. Hey, the game, not the player. <laughs> they love saying it. They say it like 14 times every episode. It's a drinking game. Yeah. By Act well, 3, I'm is- loaded. Another Hi. question? Hey. While you walk over there, I'll tell you Mary had an electric blue Dodge Charger. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Was it, was it a class? It was a classic one. No, right? it was brand new. It was and, brand new. And I was so mad about it. I was like, why don't I have a vintage Mustang or something? Because you keep bursting into flames. Well, the new ones aren't fireproof either. We all but, had vintage cars. But I realized that um, they had a flashback where I had an electric blue Corvette. And so maybe I liked electric blue cars. But then I realized that I lived in the 60s and 70s, so I wouldn't have wanted a classic car. That would have just been a car. Yeah. So I wanted a new one that went fast. That makes sense. Yeah. So there was a lot of funny scenes, but what was the funniest scene for you to film? What was the funniest, funniest scene for you to film? Funniest. Funniest? Well, for me, it was, it was the one that started the saddest and ended up the funniest which was the marble when Jared tried to squish the marble and it shot out and hit Jeff. And we were all crying and then we were all laughing and that took like 45 minutes to put everything back together. It was awful but very funny. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes? Raise your hand if you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. Ask the person next to you. DJ? What was the question? What was the funniest scene you got to film? Oh, definitely Party on Garth was the fun when I'm picking this lock. So for those of you who don't know, our hunter coats, we really can't pull things that are this big out of pockets this big. So there's somebody under you, they cut a hole in it. So I had to pull, yeah, yeah, they're like under you. And it was Robin. I saw Robin's eye through my, that hole and started laughing so hard. Cause I'm pulling out this like lock kit. Yeah, I'm pulling this out. I, had, I was getting loaded. I pulled out a full size uh, flashlight. Like a rifle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wait right there, wait right there. Yeah, it was funny. And also when you pretend to be drunk, you kind of feel drunk. And also Jared one day took me to lunch while we were filming that episode to Cactus Club and talked to me into having two tequila shots at lunch, which you're not supposed to do, and came back and he was done for the day. He got me drunk at work and I was there by myself. And then he peaced out. He's like, bye. He was out. He was gone. So he pranked you that way too. <laughs> yeah, he pranked yeah. me that way. I never, I'd ne- it was my best work though. <laughs> <laughs> So, another Where question. Go? Where Where's are you? Are your Where'd you lines? go? Is he hiding? Hold on. <laughs> what are your favorite lines to say that you remember? Oh, what's your favorite lines? I you literally remember? cannot see you. Where is Mark? Where are you? Remember Mark? He's this tall. He's just sitting and down. Big around. He's remember hanging him? Out. Oh, there you are. Oh, is he sitting down? Yeah. Are, are you asking us a question as yourself? No, she asked a question. What was it? Tell me about it. What were your favorite lines? My favorite you, line? That you remember. You've been Garth. No, I love saying that. I say it in real life. I say it during sexy time, too. Wow. 
Well, you asked. You asked. True, I asked. If you ask fault. something, it's my job to overtell you and make you regret that you asked me that. Yeah, that's true. That's my life motto. Leave them wanting less. Hey, Mark, our host with the most, as much fun as this is, he's an excellent host, by the way. Round of applause. He's out from a job. We have time for one final question. No pressure. Pick us a good one, Mark. What do you think? Mark, do us proud. He hits us when you're not here. Oh, yeah? You got a good question? You realize, no pressure. This is the last question. If it's crap, you're done. Hi. You realize that you will burst into fire like Sam's character or die rather kind of heroically like us? Oh, wait, what would you ask me? Yeah, I was nothing. caught up in Go my on. own magnificence. What was your most <laughs> emotional scene in, in, in filming in the show? Most emotional scene in the show? Well, there was a, a season, season eight, which was rather amazing. And at the end of season eight, um, before the angels fall and all that wonderful stuff, uh, I was tied to a chair for two or three days. And uh, it goes all the way from Abaddon through, uh, well, to the end of the angels for the human blood scene. And the thing about that is normally we shoot TV shows out of sequence and out of, out of whack with each other, but uh, they decided to shoot this in sequence. So we actually got to do scene after scene after scene. And normally in between takes and stuff that we're doing, between takes and stuff that we're doing, the, uh, the crew has things to do and they make noises and they talk to each other and you know, have a reasonably good time surviving as human beings. And uh, on this occasion, through the end of that episode, they didn't make a sound. They didn't make a sound for two days. So it was a time when I felt we were most cohesive. It was very dark and it was very, it was a very sad set of circumstances. It was kind of crazy. But that was probably the most enjoyment I had and probably the most emotional scene. What was your favorite emotional scene? Well, all of that episode I was talking about where we all just cried the whole time. But there was also another episode where Mary had been brainwashed and I'm begging Ketch to kill me. Like begging, on my knees, crying, asking to be killed, which was not fun. That was not fun to do. That was, that was a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, mine would have to be when Garth had to tear into Dean because he was acting like an ass when Bobby died and thinking that it only affected him and because Dean can get like that. And I, lo I loved how they wrote that because Gar Garth didn't back down to him. He told him that, it, that he was being a, a not great human. I almost said dick, but he wasn't. I don't want to say that in front of you. Um, he was being a dick and then he took it. And it wound up, me and Jensen wound up crying for that whole scene. It was really, it was really emotionally charged. And I'm so good at acting that he was blown away by it. Well, <laughs> I think- I am good at acting though. Look, you know, <laughs> you wonder why we do these things. We, we were talking about it earlier. We never get to see our audience unless we do these things, which is the greatest joy and the greatest gift to us. We travel all over the world, all over the world. We see faces all over the world. We're happy to see you. It makes us so happy. What makes us really proud is, you know, a lot of us have causes and things that we support that we really care about. And you guys come in and multiply that by thousands and make, amazing it, make it bigger can and be better. Done. And we're so proud of you for that. And the fact that you guys look after each other as well, the, the whole thing about Supernatural Family and what's going on is, is there's a sense of camaraderie there and there's a sense of connection there that I don't see a lot of in the rest of the outside world. So I'm very, very, we're all very, very happy about that. It's really dope to see also friendships that have formed yeah. through the show. It's, it's amazing. It's really amazing. We love you guys. So, I would sit through five more of these in Florida-like conditions just to be with you. So listen, if you're having a hard time, it's a tough world out there. Put your hand out, put your hand up, you know. Uh, do me a favor. Uh, how many people here are uh, diagnosed with mental health disorders? Look around. The rest of them are lying. But in the meantime, just remember, have a look when you put your hand up. Put your hand up again. Look around. You're not alone. Promise you, you are not alone. You don't have to go through this life alone. Make friends, talk, stay safe. That's what changes the world. We're happy to be here. We love being here. Uh, we love seeing you guys. It's just, it's a joy for us to be able to travel and see you guys. And uh, just, we want to say to you, 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please keep your applause and appreciation going for the cast of Supernatural, Samantha, DJ, and Mark. Thank you guys. Thank we you love so you. much. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. Keep it going for him, Belfast. That was one hot panel, am I right? Thank you so much. And to Mark, the host with the most, thank you so much, guys.